silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your face and bid us hail the dawn of grace. O oh, come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. O oh, come, desired of nations, whom priest and prophet long foretold will break the captive fetters, redeem the long lost home. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your face and bid us hail the dawn of grace. O oh, come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. O oh, come in peace and meekness, for lowly will your cradle be. Though clothed in human weakness, we shall your Godhead see. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your face and bid us hail the dawn of grace. O oh, come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In this year of faith, on the third Sunday of Advent, we hear again from John the Baptist. The crowds ask him what they should do to prepare for the Lord. His answer is very practical, very specific, and very authoritative. Let us pray for minds and hearts open to listening to God's message for us today. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your mighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, 
O daughter Zion. Sing joyful, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned your enemies away. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over your gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. We will use the second refrain. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. He has no anxiety at all, but in everything. 
by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two clocks, should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, and what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone and be satisfied with your wages. Now, the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire, exhorting them in many other ways. He preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, it is good that we all are here on this third Sunday of Advent. The Word of God comes to us with a very unique message. There is hope for all of us. This Sunday is known as the Sunday of Joy, and the pink candle in the Advent wreath is lit, meaning that our life must be in the flame of joy. At this time of Advent, 
there is no chance to be sad or discouraged. The light of the nearness of Jesus might be the reason of this season. While God's people were still in the exile in Babylon, the prophet Zephaniah addressed them with these words, Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, Jerusalem. The prophet is bringing hope to a desperate and hopeless people and calls them to go back to fidelity, to trust in God. Shout for joy. Sing joyfully. Be glad and, and exult with all your heart. Not because you are already without any problem or hard situation, but because of your great hope that God is with you and your life and story will very soon change. God's people were called to rejoice not for what they already have, but for what they hope to have according to their faith. They are called to believe that God is with them even in the exile. Similar to the prophet Zephaniah, Saint Paul from his imprisonment is urging the Christians to rejoice not only from time to time, but always. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, and in all circumstances give thanks, said St. Paul in the second reading. And now it is said to all of us on this day, we Christians must see our history with a vision of optimism, hope, and faith for the future. We cannot be without this attitude of joy and hope. We must be visionaries of new times, of new good things. Our hope in God must lead us to a new history. Let us have in mind St. Paul's words as we go up and down in our moods. Rejoice always is the first positive command. The next is pray without ceasing at all times in good and in bad. The last command is the consequence of re rejoicing and praising. Give thanks in all circumstances. An attitude of gratitude to God can make a difference in your life. Today's gospel is also a gospel of hope and joy. The good news is for those who seem to be sinners impossible to be redeemed, like the tax collectors and the Roman soldiers. John the Baptist told them that they also can enjoy God's love and forgiveness if they change their unjust way of life. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, in order to make ours the joy that comes only from God, let us ask the Lord, Master, in this Advent, 
What should I do? What should I change in my life? Please, let the light of joy, love, and happiness enlighten your life. Please rise. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with hope and anticipation for the birth of our Savior, let us join our voices in asking God to hear our prayers. Our response will be, Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, God of mercy. For the leaders of all the world nations, that their decisions bring true peace to their people. For all who gather freely at this table, that they remember those who are prohibited from worshiping. For those experiencing loneliness during this holiday season, that they may find hope through our prayers and compassionate actions. For those who are mourning the loss of the loved ones in the tragic shooting in Connecticut, that they may find some comfort from God through their community and through our prayers. For those in our community, that they may always respect life and conception to natural death. For those remembered at this Mass, Anthony and, and Rita Lancer, Francis M. Braun, Robert Bacon, and for our own per personal petitions, we pray. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, God of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, close to us now as we await the coming of your Son. Give us your peace and guard us with love. We make our prayer through Christ, 
our Lord. Amen. Please join in the preparation song, Like a Shepherd, which is hymn number 325. Dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our, our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice 
at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to, rec to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Benedict, our Pope, and Jerome, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, all the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant here peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Jesus. 
precious Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord in this chalice bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. The second person of the Blessed Trinity existed for all eternity. Word and Son and second person all refer to the same person. This person became human and received a new name, Jesus. He received this name because he got a new nature, human nature. He wasn't Jesus until he became human. He remained divine but now he was also human. He had a human body, a human soul, a human mind, a human will, human feelings. He became what all people are. From the time he was a newborn baby to his death on the cross, he was the divine person, the word, the son, the second person, in a human nature. He wasn't just pretending to be human, he was really human. In the first centuries after Jesus died, he was raised again. Sincere believers tried to understand what they believed. In this attempts, or in their attempts to understand and explain what they believed, they made several mistakes. Sometimes they decided that Jesus wasn't really human. He was just masqueraded as a human. At other times, they decided Jesus wasn't really God. He was a created human person. But at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, they proclaimed that this person, who was given the name Jesus, is truly God and truly human. He was one person with two natures. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray.
We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. An invitation. If you have a minute to stop by the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, please do so. Uh, last Wednesday, we blessed and enthroned in this church, the new statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and now you can see here at the uh, back wall of the confessional. If you go after the holy, uh, the tabernacle, you walk on your left and you will see here, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe is facing to St. Joseph. And also I want to thank you for your participation during the, the mass, the bilingual mass last Wednesday. It was a wonderful experience of community. I remember that um, this church was almost full, very crowded. Thank you for your participation. The Lord be with you. And with your May your Magdi God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, go forth and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Please join in the closing song, Soon and Very Soon, which is hymn number 770. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Alleluia, alleluia, we're going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. Alleluia, alleluia, we're going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. Alleluia, alleluia, we're going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King.